I knit and I crochet everywhere. Hey everyone, it's Tom here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a crochet rose. I'm using some paint box Simply Chunky yarn in purple, but you can use any color you want depending on what flower you're doing. On the packet, it'll tell you what hook size to use. Go down one or 1.5 millimeters. You're also going to need a darning needle to weave in any ends. You'll need some scissors for snipping off any ends that you have. You'll also need some kind of stick, rod, flower wire, whatever you've got, even a chopstick, whatever you've got lying around the house to be able to use for the stem. And then to hold it all together and onto those sticks, just get some PVA glue, or if you've got a hot glue gun, anything that's going to stick it down and that dries clear. We're going to start with a slip knot. You're gonna take your tail end of your yarn, fold it over to create a little loop. Then we're gonna fold this loop over the piece of yarn, and then we're going to take your crochet hook and slip it underneath that little center part of that loop, pull it up, and then it makes a lovely slip knot, and then you just pull it tight. Then we are going to chain 70. We're gonna take our crochet hook, go underneath the yarn, and then just turn the hook and pull it all the way through that loop. Under, and then pull it through. We're going to continue to doing that until we have 70. The hardest thing that I had to learn how to knit and how to crochet is color changing. Color changing and making pictures and making patterns within your knitting, for me, was really confusing. But then once I had a bit of practice, I just used to make lots of different squares with different colors on it. Then I kind of got the hang of it. And again, like anything, it's a bit of practice makes perfect. Now that we have 70 chains from our hook, we're going into the second chain from the hook for this pattern. So you've got the first chain and the second chain. We're gonna make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Into the second chain from the hook, we're just gonna put our hook through. We're gonna wrap the yarn round, it's got a yarn over, and then we're gonna pull that yarn through that loop. So you pull it through the loop, you've got two stitches on your hook. Then you're gonna yarn over again and pull that loop through both loops and you've created a single crochet. The next thing we're gonna do is chain two. Pull through once, pull through twice. Then we're going to skip a chain. So you can see this is the chain that we've been working into. This is the next chain, which we're gonna skip. And then this is the chain that we're gonna work into, which we're gonna do a single crochet. So again, put the hook through that chain, pull the yarn round and through. You've got two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. Continue to do that all the way to the end of 70 stitches and I'll meet you at the end. I knit and I crochet everywhere. There is no place that I haven't taken my yarn with me. It goes everywhere. It's so portable. That's the amazing thing about this hobby. You can be on the train, you can be on a plane, you can be on poolside, wherever. You can bring it with you. We are nearly at the end of the first row. This row is setting us up to be able to make the actual petals. And the chain spaces is where we're going to be working into for this next row. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain two, one, two, and then we're gonna turn our work, which is as simple as just doing that. Slip stitch into this first chain space just here. So we're gonna put our hook through and then pull that yarn through the loop. Now we're going to chain one and we're gonna work three half double crochets into this chain space. That is a yarn over. Then we're gonna put the hook through the chain space. We're gonna pull the yarn through. So you've got three loops on your hook and slightly different to a double crochet where you would go through two loops and then two loops again. This time we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. So I'll do that again for you. Into the same space, yarn over, hook into the chain space, all the way through, pull that yarn through that chain space. So you've got three loops on your hook, and you're gonna yarn over again and pull through all three loops. I'm gonna do one more into there, yarn over, put the hook into the space, pull it through. You've got three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. 
So that is your first petal that we made. The repeat that we're gonna do in all of the chain spaces all the way down to the end is as follows. Slip stitch into the chain space. We're going to chain one. Then we're gonna do three half double crochets. So that's yarn over, pull through, pull through all three loops. It's one, it's two, and there is three. Then we're going to chain one and then slip stitch back into the same stitch before moving into the next chain space by doing a slip stitch, chain one, three half double crochets, that's one, two and three. The last chain space as you can see is here. So we're going to slip into that chain space, slide four, we're going to chain one, three half double crochets, nothing's changed, you've come this far, you know what you're doing by now. So we're going to chain one and slip stitch back into that space. Then we're going to chain one and we're going to cut our yarn, leaving quite a long tail and then we're going to pull all the way through. It's kind of curled already. But this is where the fun part happens and we're going to need our darning needle because we're actually going to make it look like a flower. Start folding these petals on top of each other. It's like rolling it up and you can have a little play with it as well. The thing about making handmade crocheted flowers or handmade anything is everyone is unique. So don't beat yourself up if it looks a little bit ropey or it isn't quite the right shape. You can start to see it forming a flower shape and you can start to see those petals really coming into their own. So now we're gonna actually sew it together so that it doesn't fall apart. So we're gonna take our yarn, put it onto our darning needle. There is no real technique to where to sew these things together. But what I like to do is I turn it upside down and just go through a few of the folds a few times. And you just kind of gently work your way around the flower. And the nice thing about this sewing is that if you don't like the shape of it, you can adjust it and you can keep having a little play with it. So as you can see, this one's starting to come together, but this end kind of looks a little bit floppy. What I'm gonna need to do is see where it's a little bit flat here, put my needle through there, take it through all the way to the other side, and it will give it a little bit of extra support. So there we have our little rose. It's, I mean, I think it's really cute, but the next step is to add the stem. You're gonna need some glue and you're gonna need some green yarn or string or whatever you've got to be able to give it a bit of a yarny effect. What I like to do is take a little bit of glue right at the end of the spiky bit. And the nice thing about PVA and this kind of glue is that it dries clear. So don't worry too much if it gets on any of your flowers. I put a considerable amount on the end you just shove it into the rose. And then once you put it in, just give it a bit of a squeeze so that it stays nice and stuck to it. And there you go, it's on the stem. But now we need to make it look a little bit nicer. There's multiple ways of doing this. You could do it all the way down, but I don't like having loads of glue everywhere. So I wrap around the bottom end first. You just hold it for a little bit of time and let it dry. And then all the way up, to the very top. Once you get towards the top, snip the yarn a little bit so you've got a little bit of, makes it a bit easier to work with. And then you keep twisting all the way to the top. And then I like to add a little bit more PVA glue right to the top, but then it'll anchor it at the very top once you start twisting that yarn in. Once it's dry, you can snip that final end. You'll have your lovely little rose. And if you make loads of them, you can make a bouquet that will last forever. 